Hey folks, it's John with CajunTropicals.com. Last week I did a video all about changing from a gravel substrate to a sand substrate. And in that video, I asked you if you'd be interested in seeing a separate video all about maintaining a sand substrate. And the response was overwhelmingly yes. So let's get into it then. If you're used to a gravel substrate and you switch it over to sand, you need to know that there are some differences in the way that you're gonna maintain it. It's nothing earth shattering, but it is pretty different. So let's get into those things. Let's get into how to maintain a sand substrate while also going through some of the pros and cons. The pros are simple. There's nothing that looks more natural than a sand substrate. And when you use products like play sand or pool filter sand, they're absolutely the cheapest option out there. Well, other than a bare bottom, I guess. In my two 125 gallon tanks, I used pool filter sand that I bought from Walmart. I put an inch and a half of sand in both of these tanks and it only cost me $36. You absolutely can't beat that. Another pro is that some sands also have buffering qualities that make them great for African cichlid keepers. I've always advised African cichlid keepers to use products like this rather than using buffers and all different types of chemicals to maintain water chemistry. It just eliminates the possibility of mistakes and keeps everything very consistent. There are a couple of cons to using a sand substrate though and these are definitely things that you need to be aware of before making the switch. The first con is that you need to spend a ton of time cleaning each bag before putting them in your tank. I demonstrated this in last week's video, switching from a gravel to a sand substrate. Check it out if you want more info on how to do it. Even after cleaning the sand, you can still have some cloudiness to your tank. Understand that the more you clean it, the better results you'll get. When you think it's clean enough, clean it some more. The second and probably the biggest con is cleaning it. Sand acts similar to a bare bottom tank in that the fish waste and leftover food sits on the surface rather than sinking down between the crevices of the gravel. Now this is good because you're not going to have the number one killer of fish hiding from you. It's right there in plain sight. Well I guess that could be a bad thing if you're someone that hates the sight of fish poop. Maybe that should have been the next con on the list. Anyway, moving on, what do we do about this? Doing water changes and cleaning the fish waste is very different from vacuuming a gravel tank. You can't just plunge your suction hose into the substrate because you'll end up sucking a bunch of that sand out. So instead, we need to be patient and lightly guide the suction hose over the surface. I like to lightly scrape the surface on the backstroke to agitate the top layer and free the waste to be sucked into the tube. This takes more time, but it's a great way to remove the waste without removing half of your substrate in the process. The next and potentially deadliest con to a sand substrate is the dreaded gas pockets. Now this is where I could go all scientific and use all kinds of fancy words, but you know me, I don't wanna do that. Let's keep it simple. Let's just talk about this using plain old common sense. Under the sand surface, you're gonna have small pockets of air. It's unavoidable. If food and waste get down into these pockets and begin to decay, what happens? Anything that rots expels gases. These little pockets are gonna fill up with these gases and just sit there and fester until one day something happens to release it and boom, your substrate will literally fart and release that gas into the water, which can be lethal to your fish. Scared yet? Don't be, there's two ways around this to ensure it never happens in your tank. One is don't be lazy. Do your water changes and don't allow uneaten food and waste to fester in the tank. Second is to rake the sand during each water change like you see me doing here. I use my fingers, but there's other ways it can be done if you don't wanna get your hands wet. Do this raking after you vacuum the surface of the substrate to avoid burying the food and waste under the surface. If you follow these rules and maintain your tank regularly, you won't need to worry about these gas pockets. Are they a threat? Yes, but if you do your job, it shouldn't be a problem. Like I said in the beginning, there is no more natural look than a sand substrate in the aquarium. If you're someone that's going for that natural look and you really wanna keep things as close to nature as possible, a sand substrate might be the number one option for you. And one of the best things about it is that it can also be the cheapest. But you can't be lazy, you have to do your job. So there you go, if you're thinking about making the switch from gravel to sand, or if you're setting up your 18th tank and you're thinking of using sand in it, or maybe even your first tank and you wanna put sand in there, I hope that this eases your mind a little bit about all of the dangers 
of using a sand substrate. There's tons of articles that you can read out there that will absolutely scare you to death about sand. The sand is just going to kill all of your fish. Hopefully now you realize that it's really not that dangerous. Again, I've said it three times. If you do your job, it's not going to be a problem. So I want to thank you so much for watching this video. If you like what we're doing here, I'm going to encourage you to head over to our affiliate websites. They are down in the description below. These are companies that have shown huge support for us here at KG Tropicals. And the beautiful thing about it is that they're offering huge discounts to KG Tropicals followers. Just enter Tank Talk into the promo box at checkout and they're all going to give you huge discounts. And also don't forget to check out KGTropicals.com where you can find the brand new KG Tropicals premium cichlid pellets. That, trust me, they're selling like crazy. I've been getting up early every morning, packing orders and sending them out. It's been absolutely nuts. Try this food out. Trust me, you will not be sorry. In next week's video, we're going to talk all about that guy right there, the seamless sump system from customaquariums.com. So you're definitely going to want to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that. I'm going to go through everything about it, how it works, how to clean it, all that good stuff. So definitely come around next week to see that. Thank you again so much for watching, and I look forward to talking to you again next time.